my channel. So for today's video, I bring you a true crime case, a case that took place in Portugal. And before we start this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. I post videos every Saturday and turn the post notifications on so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to test the case, you can reach out to me through the comments or through my social media. My Instagram and my Twitter will be linked down below in the description box. And now without any further ado, let's just start this video. Joe Gonçalves was born in Albufeira and he graduated high school there and after that he started working at a hotel in Lagoa. Duke was a very hard-working person, he never had an easy life, so he was aware that he had to work really hard and he was someone who inspired others, who people could trust and he seemed like he had everything planned. As I said, Duke didn't have an easy life, he went through some traumatic events. When he was 17, his father had a stroke and that left him in a vegetative state and his mother, who sacrificed so much for his son to continue his studies, was run over while she was going to work. So if Diogo was someone who was angry at the world and felt like everything was against him, that would be understandable, but he wasn't that kind of person. He was so optimistic. He looked to his future with so much optimism. So after all of this, he went to live with his aunt, but after a while, he decided to move out because Diogo and his aunt didn't really get along, so he decided to move out and he went living with his best friend's parents. And at his best friend's house, that's where he really felt like home. On March 20th of 2020, Diogo was 21 years old and he was last seen by Feliz Bella Canaria. She was his mother's best friend and she and her husband were moving out of Algarve after living there for six years. I think I didn't explain this, but Algarve is the region in south of Portugal, Albufeira and Lagoa are both places in Algarve. I just wanted to clear that up in case you didn't know. When she said goodbye to him, she could never imagine that that would be the last time she was seeing him, that only after a few hours a tragedy would happen. So Diogo was in love with this girl named Maria, who was 19 years old at the time. She worked at the same hotel, but she was a bodyguard and he was an informatic. And Maria also didn't have an easy life. Her father left her and her mother when she was very young and her mother suffered from depression. But as Yoko, she also had goals and plans for her future. She practiced martial arts and she wanted to become a police officer. She even applied to PSP. However, she had a tattoo and that was enough for her to fail the tests. A work colleague of both of them, she didn't want to reveal her real name, so we're gonna call her Florella. She said that she thought that she knew Maria very well, that Maria was always trying to help others. If Florbella needed to switch shifts with someone for some reason, Maria would always offer to switch with her. And she seemed like a very sweet girl. And everyone knew that Yog was head over heels over Maria for over a year now. But Maria always said that they were just friends. And Farella also said that Diogo told her that Maria had told him that she had just gotten out of an abusive relationship and that she wasn't ready to get into another relationship. But according to Florbella, Maria was making Diogo think that he had a chance with her when in reality she didn't want anything with him. Diogo's best friend, Fabio Costa, he also left with his parents to Lisbon, but he left a few days earlier on March 16. He said that Diogo had a good job offer in Lisbon and Fabio and his parents were trying to convince Diogo to go to Lisbon to them, but Diogo didn't want to leave because he was so in love with Maria that he didn't want to leave her. So he decided to stay. Fabio said that Diogo will do everything to please Maria. He will take her breakfast and dinner to work. She didn't pass the test to become a police officer because of her tattoo, so she was in the process of removing it and Diogo went with her. Fabio said that they were always together as if they were a couple, but Maria kept saying that they were just friends and that she wasn't ready for a new relationship. Diogo and Maria never hung out at her place. At the time, she was living with a friend of hers and that friend had a boyfriend who would get jealous very often and that's why she wouldn't invite a boy over. But one day, Diego was scrolling on Facebook and found a video of Maria kissing a girl. And then he began to think that maybe that's the reason why she doesn't want a relationship with him because she's not into guys. He thought she was a lesbian but didn't understand why she didn't tell him that, why she kept him believe that he had a chance. 
Fabio told him that a lot of girls just kiss their best friends and that doesn't mean they're lesbians, but Diogo should talk to Maria about it. But now let's go back to the end of December 2019. Three years after Diogo's mother died, he was informed that he would receive 70,000 euros. And he shared this with Maria. So that's when Maria started to planning stealing that money from him. So she started to build her alibi and quit her job. Three months later, when she was interviewed by investigators about her behavior, she said that Yoko had tried to rape her, but they didn't believe her. And honestly, that was so disgusting of her saying that Yoko had tried to rape her because that's a very serious accusation. And especially she was accusing a person who couldn't even defend himself because he was no longer here. So that's just disgusting. But anyways, they didn't believe her because if it was true, she would try to get away from him as possible. You know, she wouldn't want to be around him. But she kept texting Diogo a lot. They were talking a lot at the time. So yeah, this doesn't really make sense. Because after all, she only wanted his money, so she needed to keep him close. When Fabrella was asked about why she thought that Maria quit her job at hotels, she said that Maria was sick of people asking her if she and Diogo were a thing, and she also wanted to stay closer to her mother, who lived in Putiman. So Fabrella didn't think it was weird. But no one really knew Maria's personal life. For example, she had a girlfriend who was a nurse, who was four years older than her, her name is Marie, Mariana Fonseca. They started dating the year before and they moved in together. However, they didn't have enough money to have their own place, so they were currently living with Mariana's parents. When Maria heard that Diogo was receiving a lot of money, she started planning to steal it so she and Mariana could afford their own place to have their own space. In court, Mariana explained what happened. She said that Maria told her that she had a plan to steal money from someone who didn't have parents, but the plan wasn't to kill him. But Yogo fought back and Maria panicked, so she ended up killing him. Their plan was to tie him up and made him say the code to his bank card. Mariana said that she never agreed with this and she even threatened Maria with the end of the relationship, but she ended up helping her anyway, so she's almost as guilty as Maria. And this crime had an inspiration. They got inspired in the TV show Dexter. This show is about a serial killer who works as a forensic analyst who takes advantage of his knowledge to not leave any evidence that could compromise him. This was told by Maria, who said that she immediately started thinking about dismembering Yogo's body and had everything that could help identify him. First, she had thought about removing his teeth, but he had died with his tongue out, so she changed her mind. So, according to First Bella, they were supposed to meet up for a romantic lunch. Maria brought a warren juice and she put three diazepam pills, an anxiolytic, I think that's how you pronounce it, and an injectable muscle relaxant that Mariana had gave her. Then she seduced him and told him to sit on a chair where she tied him up. But not everything went as Maria had planned. The medication didn't have the effect that she would hope for, so she panicked and decided to call her girlfriend for help. When Mariana arrived, uh, Maria told her that she already knew his bank's card's code. Maria revealed on court that Yogo looked to Mariana and that made her really mad and jealous and that's when she slapped him and he was able to release an arm and fought her back. That's when everything went wrong. She tackled him to the ground and suffocated him. Maria knew very well Yogo's habits. She knew she couldn't make wheel draws of excess in 400 euros a day. But she wanted the money fast, and for that she needed to get into Diego's phone so she could access the app and be way. Maria told the court that she saw in a TV show where that a man had accidentally killed a woman and he needed to access her phone so he cut her fingers so he could unlock the phone with her fingerprints. So she decided to do the same and she cut Diego's fingers with a knife. On the next day, they put uh, Diego's remains in bags. They put the box in their cart and the fingers in an envelope and then they decided to go shopping with this money. Ugh, this makes me sick to think about it. I don't know how could they have 
than this and feel no remorse. And for Yoga's friends, he was still alive. On that Saturday, Yoga Rego, who worked with Yoga in the informatic department, received a text message from Yoga, and Yoga was asking him if he could substitute him in the next day because he couldn't go to work. And David said yes. However, this happened at the same time that pandemic was starting and he had just been declared in emergency state and the hotel was closing and his boss needed Yoko. So David called him but he didn't answer, obviously. He kept calling and insisting but he got no answer. Until he started receiving texts from Yoko saying he didn't work at the hotel anymore. Yoko apparently said that he had met someone in France and was going to stay there. But as I said earlier, Yoga was that kind of person that had everything planned. He had his whole, whole life plan. And every movement of his was predictable. So the ones that were close to him immediately knew that something was wrong. The chief of the informatica department, who didn't want to reveal his real name, so we're going to call him Juan, was the first to realize that something was very, very wrong. Yogo wouldn't answer his calls, but he would respond to his texts, and he said that he couldn't talk on phone. And Juan thought that that was something very weird, and Yogo was also asking for his re resignation letter. Juan, however, sensed that something was off and just told him, hey, if you want to talk to me about this, call me. That way I really know that this is really you and not some someone else. Because he really didn't believe that it was Yogo who was sending those text messages. And he was right. So at this point, Maria's and Mariana's plan wasn't going as they were hoping. They tried to make it seem like Yogo had moved to another country, but the people who really knew him knew that that couldn't be true. They still had his remains on the car, and the car was parked in front of Mariana's parents' house. And on the next night, they got rid of his body. They put plastic bags in the truck of the car so there wouldn't be any evidence before they put the body in the car. When they were getting rid of his body, Maria told the court that she didn't get his body completely out. She just pushed his head and started to cut it. At first, she said that she was scared when she started seeing the blood and she even had to stop for a while to throw up but then she kept cutting his whole body this is so freaking disgusting Maria always tried to leave Mariana out of the crime she was committing but Mariana, instead of remaining silent, she decided to talk to investigators to try to help her girlfriend however, the two didn't have time to discuss the details of the stories they were going to tell so their stories had a lot of inconsistencies but according to both of them, Mariana was always in shock and was only there for assistance. But in my opinion, she was as much guilty as Maria because even though she didn't kill him, she didn't um, cut his whole body to pieces, she watched everything happen. She knew exactly what Maria was planning. She knew she was going to steal money from him and that is already a crime and that is already disgusting that she was trying to steal money from him the money he received because his mother was dead did she really think that he actually wanted to receive that money i think he would much rather have his mother back with him so that was so disgusting that she was thinking about stealing that and then uh, and then she ended up killing him so Mariana knew everything, she knew everything, so she, in my opinion, she is as much guilty as Maria. And the judge was also shocked while hearing this because the two of them were showing no emotions at all. He kept asking them questions about where Mariana was because there were a lot of things in their stories that just didn't add up. And one of them being what happened on the night that Diogo's body was dismembered. His body had been cut surgically by the joints. But before the judge could ask any question, Mariana said that just because she was a nurse, it didn't mean that she was the one to do it. Because anyone can search how to do it in the internet. Maria told the court that the lie of the garage was kept going on and off, so she asked Mariana to be in front of the sensor so the lie would stay on. And she was saying all of this, she was describing how 
she dismembered his body and everything that happened that night while showing no emotion at all or regret and even the judge who is someone who had who had already seen numerous men and women who committed all types of crimes was shocked and horrified by what he was hearing he even said that that's cold spirit that's macabre you have you have to be someone really cold to do something like that and don't feel no remorse no regret like don't show any emotion at all two days after the crime at night maria was driving diogo's car and mariana was following her Maria said that she got out of the car and threw his torso into the water along with his fingers and with his phone. Then she drove the car to bleach and left it there. She was trying to make it look like he had committed suicide. On the next night, they went to Tavira to get rid of the rest of his remains. But the mystery of Diogo's disappearance was really easy to solve. Everything popped into the two of them. Phone calls and text messages between Maria and Diogo until the day he died. The images of the ATM security cameras where they withdraw his money with his bank card. And the bank transfers via MBA to both of their bank accounts. All of this was enough for judicial police to figure out what had happened. Maria even tried to blame Diogo's aunt, but it was obvious that it was her and Mariana. Maria was sentenced to 25 years in prison, which is the maximum sentence here in Portugal. In my opinion, I said this in a lot of videos of, uh, where I talk about Portuguese cases, 25 years is nothing. And in this case, it's really nothing. For what they did, it's nothing. But Mariana was acquitted of the crime of homicide and was sentenced to only four years in prison for desecration of corpse. I think she should spend more time in there because even though she didn't kill him, and she didn't dismember his body. She knew about everything and she didn't do anything to stop it. I don't know, that in my opinion makes her as much guilty as Maria. 25 years is not enough for Maria, but for only four years for Mariana, I think she, maybe not a 25, but I don't know. I don't know, I, th I think she deserved to spend more time in there. So that's all for this video. Let me know your thoughts about this case in the comments as usual. And if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already and turn the post notifications on so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. I upload videos every Saturday. And if you want to suggest a case, you can reach out to me through the comments or through my social media. My Instagram, my Twitter will be linked down below in the description box. And yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye bye.